It's weak. Plus one, one toe. One toe, I wore my, my toe shoes so I could do one toe and you don't have to see my feet. Week 11. So, um, this week I wanna talk a little bit about some stuff in kinda, of, I don't know, uh, recognizing weakness and fear from that space. So John and I had our first big kind of video recording session. I don't know what you'd call it, but we started filming for um, our hashtag don't die in July kind of series about us getting ready for the Red Kite Rondi and, and kind of following our journey through that on Saturday. And after that, we went out and uh, smashed out a quick two hours, about 30 miles um, in headwinds everywhere. And it was challenging. Um, and my headspace was really challenged and I was trying to figure it out and John and I talked a bunch on the ride and I was just grumpy and weird and dealing with some stuff and I didn't really know what was going on. And so I spent the rest of the weekend really trying to figure out what was wrong with my headspace. Now I'm, I'm not going to lie. I mean, since, you know, May of last year, um, I've been a lot more sensitive and in touch with myself, um, which is good. But it's been challenging because I'm poking on nerves in my psyche that are slightly more dangerous, places I may have covered up to protect myself and so on and so forth. Um, and really over the past, you know, eight and a half months, I've felt really comfortable starting to dismantle some of the challenges that I have and, and the things I've put on top of my life um, to protect me from things that are uncomfortable or things that challenge me. And I think I uncovered a really big one um, this past weekend. So when we did our assessments at Beyond Exercise with Eric and Ellen um, and the whole team there, it, it starts to it, it felt like to me like the NFL combine, right? Where you're like trying to do your best, like balance on one foot, with your eyes closed, your hands out, all this stuff, right? It felt like a competition. And granted, I did so much better then than I probably would have done nine months ago because I've been working on my balance and my fitness and my flexibility and my strength and all of these things. But it got in my head. I started thinking about, I'm not a good athlete. Um, I, I mean... I'm not historically a good athlete, right? I, I um, played sports as a kid and was okay. I played hockey at a B level and never could make the travel team. You know, a bunch of the kids I knew and, um, you know, they went on to, to, to play, you know, hockey in college and whatnot. And I just wasn't that kid. I wrestled in high school too. And I mean, I was on the JV team and I got my ass whipped frequently. Um, you know, I was never a jock. And where I grew up, being one of the sports kids was important. It was part of the, you know, part of the, the, the social strata of schools. I think it is in a lot of places. And I did a bunch of other stuff and I had a lot of different friends. And I had friends who were jocks and friends who were nerds and all over the place. And that's good. And that really made me who I am. But that kind of mental challenge of you're not good enough to be good at this sport still kind of was lingering in the back of my head. And it kind of all came home to roost this weekend when we started filming. Because what I realized is I've pulled all those filters away. And now I don't get to hide. Um, I can build a, 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 a mental picture or present things to people. And I mean, I was a theater major. That's like <laughs> one of the things I'm good at doing is I can show people that I'm something, that I'm in the place I am and th and I can put up walls and protections and project things so that they feel the way that I want to feel. And that allows me to feel that way. Um, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. But this thing hit me deep because I don't know if I'm going to be able to perform. And it's not just the Red Kite Rondi. I mean, it's further down the road and we can get deep into that. But it, it, it's about, can I do this thing? Can I be good at an athletic endeavor um, when I've never proven to myself that I can? 
And it's this self-doubt, this weakness that I have where I doubt myself consistently no matter what I'm doing, which sometimes drives me to excel. But this one place is really, I don't want to say scary, but I don't have a better word for it. It's real tender. It's a tough place for me to think about because I've never been that person. Now, we've built an amazing team around us. And, and you know, we have people who are helping us with our training, people who are helping us with, you know, the, the logistics and people who are just helping us with the mental aspect, all of these things. And it's going to be amazing. And I know I'm going to succeed. But right now I'm entering this journey in a tough space because I'm trying to figure out what it looks like to succeed. And I'm trying to figure out if my brain is going to accept the fact that I can. Um, and you know, John, John said to me, he said, it's not any different than building a team around the drivers doing the 24 hour Daytona. And you know, I've, I've been with a crew that had amazing success there and shout out to my friends, uh, on the Porsche Motorsport North America team. Awesome job at Sebring guys. Um, but that sort of team is what we're building people who can take the drivers who have to have talent and have to put in the work and have to have the ability to drive that whole race, but go in and put in the guy who's prepping the tires, you know, the gal who's pulling the fuel. All of those things are important in the aspect of getting something crazy like what we're trying to do done, something that, something that we're not already prepared to do. And I know there are plenty of people out there who do ultras and Joe Lawhorn's ridden across America. We're just not at that space right now. And getting us there is going to be part of this journey. And I'm excited to do it with John and with all the people who are supporting us and with Ellen and my family and all those people. But I'm excited to do it with you. And I'm excited to do it in a place of honesty and commitment that you're going to see how hard it is for us as the people we are. And I hope you're going to get to know us a little bit better through this process. Um, and I hope ultimately, you know, we're going to be able to get to know ourselves a little bit better through this process because I'm already seeing those changes and that stuff happening. So um, that's where I'm at this week. I'm excited to continue to roll these things out and uh, and keep working hard. So uh, we will uh, see you next week. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, John made a bell for me, which I won't hit, but hit the bell. See you guys next week. Cheers.